Happy Father's Day, everybody. This video is dedicated to any parent out there who is currently struggling with their alcohol or drug addiction or anybody who is in early recovery. I'm here to provide you with some hope. What is up, everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul, where we talk about the problem, but focus on the solution. And it is Father's Day, and I was debating on what type of video to do. I even forgot that it was Father's Day, but my son got me a beautiful gift. I'm like, oh yeah. So I decided to make a Father's Day video. And do me a favor, please, please share this video with anybody you know who is struggling with addiction, who is a parent out there, or anybody who is in early recovery. Like, man, being a parent in early recovery is one of the most difficult things and I'm gonna talk a little bit about my experience of what it was like and the things I did and how much better it is now, all right? So I, I just kinda wanna start this story off by talking a little bit about my addiction. Um, so first and foremost, being the son of an alcoholic mom, I never thought that I would drink or use, which obviously that happened, okay? Um, my idea was as soon as my son was gonna be born, I was gonna stop, but I couldn't. I couldn't stop even for my son, and I started to realize like what my mom was going through. So I didn't actually get clean and sober until my son was three years old. And as I was in my active addiction, I felt like an absolute terrible human being, a terrible parent, because I had all these ideas of what a good parent is supposed to be, and I was none of those things. So even though I was seeing my son because me and his mom had split up, like even though I was there, I wasn't there because I was getting drunk or high. And this kid, he all he wanted to do was play with me. And man, like the, the two instances that I remember that really just made me feel like a piece of garbage was I remember being in the bathroom, crushing up and snorting pills while my son is just knocking on the door. Like all he wanted to do was play. He missed me, he wanted to spend time with me. And I'm in there just snorting drugs, you know what I mean? But there was another time where it was early in the morning and I went to go meet my drug dealer and I had my son and so he's, two, three years old and he's in the car seat and he was just hungry. He just said, you know, daddy, I'm hungry. I want food, I want food. I'm like, just hang on, hang on. Daddy just has to meet a friend real quick. And if you have drug dealers like I did, like they never show up on time. And we're sitting there, we wait, waited for like, two hours as this kid is in the car seat just hungry and I'm like, just wait a little bit longer, wait a little bit longer. And I'm sitting there just dying inside, just knowing like, this is not what a good parent does. You know what I mean? And we sat there and we waited and we waited. So towards the end of my addiction, and it's crazy, six years ago today, you know, like it was around Father's Day, okay? I didn't get sober until June 23rd. So if I stay clean until next Saturday, I'll have six years clean. So I, I've been thinking a lot about that time back then. And man, the last four months before I got sober, I was not allowed to see my son. I wasn't allowed to see my son for four months. And you would think, you would think that a parent would just stop using, they would just stop drinking, they would get well so they could see their kid again. But that's not what happened to me. All it did was make me more depressed and it made me drink and use even more. I remember when I was laying in the hospital bed and my family was begging me to stop, my kid's mom was there crying, begging me to stop. My crazy brain in my addiction thought that my son would be better off with a dead father than a junkie father. Like that's how crazy this addiction is, okay? But as some of you know who follow my channel, I ended up going to California, my mom took me there, and I ended up cleaning up. Now. I share this story because I work at a rehab center and I get so many people who come in from out of state and I try to convince them, don't go back home. Do not go back home because it will be a quick path to relapse. I don't mean never go back home, but build a foundation, build a very strong foundation. And I tell them this because I stayed in California for 15 months, 15 months, because that's how important my recovery was to me. And it's difficult, it was the hardest thing I ever had to do because every, a uh, paternal instinct is saying, you gotta go back home, you gotta be with your son, you gotta be with your son. But I had to sit there and realize, like, if I go back, if I go back home too soon, I'm gonna die and this kid is going to lose a father. So as difficult as it was, I had to stay in California and continue working on myself. Like, I can't stress enough, I was in a, I was in a great situation because my son has an amazing 
mother and her family is amazing and they were taking care of my son while I was trying to get better, okay? And it sucked because anytime she would call me and tell me that he was sick or he was sad or he was upset, like everything in me was like, Chris, you gotta go back home, you gotta be there for him. But I had to get rid of my delusion of control, like being there with him, like I'm not a doctor, I couldn't save him, I couldn't give him medicine, you know? All I could do is be there to comfort him, but I had to remember, he has the comfort that he needs back home. And this was difficult, you know? Like, I have people who are in early recovery and they're like, oh no, I gotta get back because I, I gotta be there for Christmas or I gotta be there for my kid's graduation or this soccer game or whatever it is. Like, let me make it clear. Because I put my sobriety first, I missed literally every single holiday with my son. Father's Day, Halloween, Thanksgiving, Christmas, his birthday is New Year's Eve, so right after that, I missed his birthday. Like, I missed every annual landmark event with my son because I was focusing on my recovery. And you know what? If I had to do it all over again, I would 1,000 times over because, like I said, it built my foundation. I was able to focus on myself. I was able to dive in deep and realize all the things that were leading me to drink and use, and I learned a bunch of different tools to overcome that, all right? So after about 15 months, I decided, you know, it's time to move back to Las Vegas, become an adult again, start being a father to my son, and it was tough. It was hard. Even with over a year and a half sober, my kid's mom still didn't fully trust me. Like I was allowed to see him, but I wasn't allowed to like have him sleep over, you know, and things like that because she still didn't fully trust that I was gonna stay clean. And I couldn't blame her, you know? I was upset, I was hurt, and all these things because, you know, a year and a half sober, like why don't you trust me yet? But I had to remember, I gave her so many reasons to not trust me and not believe in me. And this is what I try to teach people who are in early recovery, who are like, but my family doesn't trust me, why doesn't my family trust me, why are they still mad at me? I can't stress enough, your actions speak louder than words, okay? I was putting in the work. I was putting in a ton of work. And when I moved back, she started to see like, oh wow, he's taking his sobriety seriously. He's going to meetings, he's working on himself. But it wasn't just the fact that I was going out and doing things and working and stuff like that. She saw the change in me. She saw that I was the type of father who would show up when he said he was gonna show up. You know what I mean? She can count on me now. See, I often thought that my kid's mom only hated me because of my uh, drinking and using. No, 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 no. That wasn't the case. She hated me because I was an asshole. all right? I was unreliable, I lied all the time. These are the things that made her hate me. That's why I have to teach people that getting sober is just the bare minimum. We have to do more, we have to become better people. Like, now, my life is amazing. And like I said, I would do it all over again a million times because now I'm coming up on six years sober and my son is actually right there in the other room. I'm spending Father's Day with my son. My son loves hanging out with me. We get to go see movies together. We get to play together, build Legos together. In fact, look what he got me for Father's Day, this beautiful little Thanos brickhead, right? And we get to do stuff. and. His mom trusts me now. Like, um, next week for my birthday, uh, my son, my girlfriend, and I were gonna go visit my best friend down in Southern California, and we get to go to Corgi Beach Day. I might vlog it, I'm not sure. But it's all because of my recovery and because I realized that I had to put my recovery first. Like, when people said, you have to put your recovery above everything else, I'm like, you're crazy. You're crazy. How can I put my recovery ahead of my son? That is my son. But. Logically, when we look back at it, when my recovery isn't ahead of my son, I don't get to see my son. That's why I have to prioritize it. So I always have to be focused on my sobriety and staying clean and staying sober so my son has a father in his life, all right? But like I said, I wanted to make this video because there's so many people in early recovery who, who give up, they leave, because the first three months, the first six months, the first year are difficult. Some of you are dealing with custody battles, some of you can't see your child, you know, all these things, don't give up. The only thing that they promised to me was, Chris, as long as you stay sober one day at a time and each day you try to better yourself just a little bit, they promised me that everything will get better. They didn't give me a time, they didn't say on this day everything will be better, they just guaranteed that it will be better and it did. It stayed better and it continues to as long as I stay clean. There's a saying in the meetings where they say, 
don't leave before the miracle happens. And it breaks my heart on a regular basis how many times I see people leave before that miracle happens. Just stick it out, rely on your support system, listen to stories of other people about the work they put in into themselves and their recovery, and I promise you too that things will get better. Okay, but anyways, like I said, please do me a favor, share this with any parent you know, even if they're not an addict or an alcoholic, share this with them if they're going through a tough time dealing with custody or anything like that, share this with them to maybe give them some hope, okay? But if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you are new here, not only do I make videos about addiction recovery, but I'm always making videos to help you out with your mental and emotional well-being. Click that little round subscribe button. And if you wanna check out some more content on my channel, you can click or tap on one of those thumbs nails all right thank you so so much for watching happy father's day and i'll see you next time